Ralph Klesbo. Um, he's singing in the name of Ralph Huna, right? So um, starts off saying, uh, Amar Ralph Klesbo, Amar Ralph Huna. He says, Ralph Klesbo says in the name of Ralph Huna. He says, Kol Adam Shiesh Bo Yerat Shemaim, the Rav, Nishmaim. He says, anyone who fears the heavens, his words are heard. So it's, it's a big idea. What, what does it mean that a person fears heavens, one? And what does it mean that his, 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 uh, his, words are, his words are heard? What does it mean that a person's words are heard? So the Gemara immediately comes with a pasuk. So this pasuk is actually in Ecclesiastics. This, this pasuk is in Ecclesiastics. And this pasuk should, is going to be, is a reason why Rav Kazbo is saying in the Rav Huna that anyone who fears Hashem, his words are heard. So the, the, it's in, um, it's in Ecclesiastics 12.12. Uh, you 12. So know, if you want to, want to look that up, anybody want to look it up? Yeah, Kohelet. Saying it in English, being an American name. Um, so he starts off with, and so this this is the this is the pasuk, and we're going to build this pasuk. I'm telling you, this pasuk starts off an amazing adventure. It's one of like, I'm telling you, like this is like amazing. So it says, "Sof devar hakol nishma et ha Elohim yira veet mitzvotav shema ki ze." Is the key words right here? Ki ze kol hadam, right? So, so, so it's saying, it's saying in essence, it, the pasuk is saying that the, the sum of the matter is, when all is considered, the person who keeps, who keeps the Torah, for this is all of man. Call Adam. This is all of man. So, what does it mean, like a person who keeps the Torah? This is all of man. It's like I don't know. It's like kind of like a cryptic type of dynamic. Like if I come to you and say, like, um, the person who keeps the Torah. And in, 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 in fears of Shem, uh, this is all of man. What do you mean this is all of man? All of man is arms, legs, man. what do you mean all of man? What do you mean, even on a spiritual level, what does it mean this is all of man, right? Because, you know, it's it, it not the Jewish people, you know, keeps all the commandments. It, just, it doesn't say a Jew, it says a man, you know, that's another kasha. So I'm gonna give, I'm gonna bring three opinions because the Gemara asked the question next. It says, my keys, they call Adam. He said, what is this expression for this is all of man, right? Same question. Wow, maybe I know something. I'm thinking like the Gemara. But this is the question, right? What does this mean that this is all of man? So the first, the first, uh, the first um, comment, uh, the first response to this question is from Rob Elazar. Rob Elazar says, it's a tremendous story about Rob Elazar. I mean, we go into it, but... <laughs> This guy grew a beard, you know, it's like, it's, just, it's a tremendous person. Yeah, it has a lot to do with Yavna, the yeshiva there. So, um, so he says, so Rabbi Lazar says, he says, um, Amar, Rabbi uh, Eleazar, Amar, he says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. he said, the Holy One, blessed be he. He says, Ko Haolam Kulo, Kulo Lo Nevira Ela, Bishvil Ze. He says the entire world was created only for the sake of this person, right? That's a big statement. Seeing a person who a person who fears Hashem and a person who keeps all the commandments. He says this for he says the entire world was created for this person. So everything that we see, the stars, the moon, the, the grass, the wind, you know, the snails, the grasshoppers, the lions, the sheep, everything was created for this person, right? So the Maharal, he says like this. First of all, the Maharal is, is a very interesting person because he's famous for many things, but one of the most famous things is that he was able to take, utilize the holy names that are in a Sefer uh, yeah, Yisira, and he was able to use those divine names that were inside of there. And he took clay and he made literally a, a moving living creature out of this, right? It's like a huge concept. It's like, like he literally, and, and so the, 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 the commentators say, the fact that he made this clay creature that, you know, was able to like walk around and communicate and these different types of things, you know, it's kind of like, um, 
was that movie they had a long time ago, Short Circuit? You know, it was like- um, Johnny Five. Or, or yeah, Johnny Five, exactly. I know I triggered you guys. And so th that, 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 this character was like basically a robot created in like the 1800s, but it wasn't a robot because it was made out of clay, right? And it's interesting because man was created out of, the, out of clay as well, right? But another interesting point, you know, just to, you know, bring a little bit of liberalism into this whole thing, they said that his wife Pearl was a humongous scholar. Like she, they said she she learned. Obviously, she grew up in a very holy home, but she would learn uh, uh, the the Talmud minimum five hours a day from the age of twelve until she met the Maharal. And not only that, most of his writings that he wrote, she was the one who edited, and she's the one who made sure the, the sources were correct. And then when there are certain halakhic questions that he couldn't ask, he would give it to his wife. So a big part of their relationship was them like learning together. So this is the Maharal, the guy who could create things uh, using divine names, create robots out of clay. And not only that, he was partners with his wife. So we should all, you know, marry to uh, build that type of relationship with our wife where we learn and we build and we create it's something Rabbi Pinkas stresses a lot, learning with your wife. So this is what he says in his first part. He goes off of Rob Eliezer. So Rob Eliezer says, the world was created for the sake the world was created, this, this idea that you know, a person who keeps the Torah and fears Hashem, this is all a man. So Rav Eliezer says, this person, this, per, this, per, this means that the world, the entire world was created for the sake of this person, right? So this, all of man, meaning this is all of reality. This is Rav Eliezer. So the Maharal, he says on this point, when one achieves the fear of God and keeps the commandment, he embodies the purpose which the world was created. Thus, the rest of humanity was created primarily to serve such a person. So it's like, whoa, like this is like a huge concept, you know, like what does this mean? Like you're saying like, if I keep the Torah and I have fear in Hashem, that the entire world was created for my existence. That Hashem was waiting for this, like he brought down millions and billions of, of Nashimot, but the one that's one who fears Hashem and keeps the Torah, this one, is the one that the creation was made for, right? So you think about it, it's an interesting point to, to think about because it's like, you know, um, you think about this idea of, 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 and just to give a little, I think Rashi gives a little bit, Rashi says, Eliezer holds that the purpose, the entire purpose of, purpose of creation was that a god fearing person would eventually arise. Such a per when such a person exists, there was no need for any other creature smaller, big or small. So what is the riot to this idea? Okay, it's a big idea, it's a humongous idea. But you know what the perfect example of this idea is? Noah. Noah lived in a generation that he, you can say his family to a degree, they feared Hashem and the, the Torah that they had at that time, he kept it. And so when the world went south, Hashem wiped out the entire creation Right, except for, and we're going to build to, you know, the, the actual Teva itself, but he wiped out a creation and they're the only ones that exist. So what's going on? Ah, but if I look inside this particular Gemara, I'll see clearly that what happened was, is that the world was only created for exactly what the Gemara is telling us right now. A person who fears the Shem and keeps the Torah. So the world could, could be, it could, a model would happen. I mean, it's not going to be another one, but a model happened. And then what happened there? The whole world was gone. Why? Because of what we're learning right now, because this is what the world was created for. So the next comment comes from um, Rebbe Abba uh, Bar Kahana, right? Not, not to be confused with Mayor Kahana, you know, uh, you know, Israel glory. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. And so, so he says like this, he says, Shaklu ze keneged kol ha'olam kula. He says, the person who fears God and keeps the Torah, right, is equal in importance to the entire world. Okay, so what does that mean? The Maharal says like this, the person who fears God and defines himself differently than the masses of humanity, who spend their lives aimlessly satiating their physical appetite. Thus, this person is a world unto himself distinct from all of humanity and equal to them in value. So this idea builds us also back to Noah, right? Noah 
was what? He had the Teva, had his family, but all of the different kingdoms were represented inside of this table, right? So you have Noah, the God-fearing person, and then you have the rest of creation together, right? You have them together. So this idea is saying this. Now, why are these ideas important? Why is it important to bring this to start as the, the seed, as the catcher to the whole sugya that we're about to embark on at 6.30 every night here at Boshina Kadisha in the old city, the holiest place in the universe, what is this? Why is this important? Because if we don't understand the purpose of creation and our role in creation, what Hashem has for us, then all the halakha, all the Torah, everything that could come and go. And not only that, you could say, well, why, why does it even matter if I do this or if I do that? And we're going to go into that world very shortly with Rabbi Hirsch, because he's going to take us into that reality. But we have to know that Hashem only created the world and created human beings for, for, the, for this expression of keeping the Torah and fearing this reality of disconnecting from Hashem, right? That disconnection. It's like when you really love somebody, right? And you really love something, you're not going to do something that's going to disconnect you from it. If you know that your whole life is counting on a particular situation, you're not even going to risk disconnecting from it, right? Years ago, you know, my dad, you know, is, uh, used to have an insurance company. And some of the times he represented individuals. He represented this guy who was a, a, a Laker. He was a basketball player for the Lakers. And his name was Jamal Wilkes, right? And you know about Jamal Wilkes? Okay, so he was one of my dad's clients. <laughs> and my dad told me a story that he told about his negotiation with the Lakers. So, you know, the Lakers, I guess they were up for a championship. You know, I don't know these years, you know, a long time ago. And they're up for a championship. So they really needed Jamal Wilkes to come back, but they had to renegotiate his contract. So he goes into the office and, and um, the, the owner at the time was this guy, Jerry Buss, you know, who was like a very strong negotiator type of a person. And, and long story short, in this negotiation, his agent knew that they needed him, so he asked for a lot of money. And so Jerry Buss really wanted to win this championship, you know, and this is before the collective bargaining agreement, all these different things. Him knowing that he really wanted to win his championship, what did he do? He, 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 you know, he all, he, the agent asked for a lot of money. So Jerry Buss was really upset about it, like fuming upset. And he said, this, he said, Jerry Buss got so upset in the middle of the negotiation, they're sitting in the office and he starts calling Jamal Wilkes names, names I'm not even going to say, right? There's names that would be considered derogatory and this, all this other stuff. And he said, Jamal Wilkes didn't say a word. He let Jerry Buss let it all out of the system. And, and, and they did the deal, they hugged and kissed. And the next year they won the championship, right? Right? So what did, we, what did my dad tell me about that? He said, well, you're, when it comes to you doing business and your money and your negotiation, don't let anybody ever take your money away from you. No matter what they say, what they do, how crazy they act, never lose your composure. Because you receiving that money, that's the only thing that's going to matter. You saying something back, you getting into an argument, that's only for five minutes, 10 minutes at that, right? And then the deal's over, you're out. But those millions of dollars you could have made, it's now gone. The money for your kids' tuition, this, the life you could afford for your wife, everything's gone. So it's a similar idea with us with Hashem. The world is going to try to convince us of many things. But the point is, are we going to allow the world to take our relationship away from Hashem? Are we going to be there and we're going to stay silent? We're going to stay quiet and say, you know what? I hear the noise. I hear the drama. I hear all the distractions. But guess what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to go. So here's